Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headline, St. Martin Primary student Aniela Birmingham tops the Grade 6 National Assessment. Telecoms Minister Oscar George says Dominica is better prepared for post-disaster communication and Prime Minister Skerritt contemplates a significant shift in the focus of the country's education system. The details coming up. When flow, it only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. First stop in the news, St. Martin's Primary School has stopped this year's Grade 6 National Assessment. Here is Andrea Lui with more. The announcement was made by Minister for Education, Octavia Alfred, during a press conference this morning. The top performers in the 2020 examinations were Ayala K.J. Birmingham, St. Martin Primary, 3 A's. Serena D.S. Harris, St. Luke's Primary, 3 A's. Kennelly S. Baron, St. John's Primary, 3 A's. Dinari A. Samuel, St. Mary's Primary, 3 A's. Therese Libla, Convent Prep Preparatory School, 3 A's. I wish to again congratulate our top students and schools in this year's assessment. The pupils who sat the exams were commended for once again displaying their own brand of resilience. Like all of you, we were concerned about the implications of the upheaval caused by COVID-19. I am so happy to note, however, that our concerns, though well-placed, have not come to bear. Instead, this year, we are witnessing similar results to what obtained in previous years. In some cases, we are noting improvements, while in some of our schools, there continue to be a struggle. Again, just like they did after Hurricane Maria, our students have displayed their own brand of resilience and have persevered with the support of their parents and other loved ones, as well as the support, I am sure, they receive from their wider communities. This year, close to 200 children will benefit from government assistance in the form of scholarships and bursaries. On the basis of this year's results, government has decided to award 64 students with scholarships and 114 students with bursaries. The amount allocated to scholars and bursaries for textbook and stationery is $1,000 and $700 respectively. In addition, the cost of CXC fees for these students will be covered by the government of Dominica. A total of 846 pupils wrote the Grade 6 National Assessment this year, 391 females and 455 males. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News.
Meantime, Aniela Birmingham of the St. Martin Primary School, who topped this year's Grade 6 National Assessment, is elated at the results and says her love for reading was vital to her success. Being the top student, I feel great, I feel joyful, I work very hard throughout the year and I think it truly paid off. Reading helped me because some children that don't like to read, they don't really like to study, but I find joy in reading my books and reading really helped me in English and comprehension of the top subjects. With the COVID-19, it was kind of challenging, especially with the online learning, but I believe with the help of my parents, teachers, and knowing that I wasn't the only one going through this, it really helped me to not really change and for me to continue as I am doing. Principal of St. Martin's Primary School, Brinette Moreau, while pleased with the result, says it was a challenging time for the children. It has been a very challenging year for our students, um, starting with the end of April up until the exams, the day of the exams itself. And so I am really happy with you know how our students have done. In September of 2019, St. Martin Primary School, one of our goals was to have all our students online by the end of this year. So in September, some of our classes had already started online. So we had one grade six whose students already had work online. But it's a totally different thing from giving you homework online, asking you to do an exercise online, and actually teaching online. And second place in this year's exams, Sirena Harris of the St. Luke's Primary School is also happy with her placement. I'm very excited and happy that I achieved my goal. The coronavirus has affected all of us. In what ways did it affect you? Well, it affected me in a way that I lost contact with my friends and I, I was lonely, but I had to manage alone, but I managed. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of your schoolwork, how did you, how did you manage your schoolwork? It was good because I had less distractions at home. When I like at school, where children are shouting and being noisy. So it helped me to be more focused. In other news now, Dominica is in a much better position now than it was three years ago to maintain communications, communication links across the country following natural disasters. This is as a result of efforts to boost post-disaster communication in the country. Minister responsible for telecommunications and broadcasting, Oscar George, says significant progress has been made by installing a network which will take over in the event traditional communications networks go down during a disaster. We have heavily invested in infrastructure, building a robust and resilient um, network around Dominica. And we believe that that, that is very important for, for bringing connectivity to public sites and public facilities because we, we want to reduce the telecommunications divide. And a very important component of that is underground you know, fiber, and that in itself has a lot of resiliency benefits. Um, as it relates to communication post-disaster, um, we had the experience of Maria, and, and what that showed us is that you know, telecommunication infrastructure might, might not be operational following a disaster. Um, the internet might be down, you know, radio broadcasting might not be operational either. So what we did is we approached the, the ITU. ITU is the International Telecommunications Union. And in collaboration with, the, with DASI, Dominica Amateur Radio Club, we were able to, to commission and install a, what we call a winging network. So essentially what that does is it's a radio messaging network. Um, um, it has the capacity to send messages, um, emails, attachments, um, different messages that can be achieved um, all around the island. So, so also that, that service, is, it doesn't need the internet to, to function and that is very, very good. Um, we also have solar um, generators, so it could go off the grid. George says Dominica is in a better position now in terms of resilience in telecommunications. As we see, um, disaster response needs to happen swiftly. And, and if you have communication network that you're able to, to make calls, you know, contact the, the disaster um, operations office, even make contact with persons out of Dominica. That in itself is very important and that network allows us to do that. The minister explains how the recently launched Wind Link radio messaging system will boost disaster preparedness efforts. What that system does, it, it gives us an additional layer of resilience. Um, you know, we have met with all the operators, um, um, including Flu, Digicel and, and Epic, and they have shared with us disaster plans. And, and we as a government, we have also created our own disaster plans. But nevertheless, it's always better to have um, follow-up plans and, and this is one of, of the plans we have in case these traditional telecommunications operators um, find themselves in a bit of a problem. 
Um, so, so as I said, this has been installed. We have training ongoing to ensure that we build capacity around using the network, using the service, and, and following any disaster, we'll be able to make um, you know, swift communication with first responders, and that in itself life is very excellent for, for us. The minister responsible for, digi for the digital economy, Kasani Laville, says everyone has an opportunity to be a producer in such an economy. Laville says internet connectivity and access are critical in order to build a digital economy. In the traditional economy in Dominica, many of us are consumers. Um, with that being said, the internet is what is going to establish the linkages between the consumers and producers, business to business, government to business, government to consumer. Yeah. It, it links and establishes that network, that framework that we're going to operate on. So we are waiting for everything to be back to normal as it relates to connectivity in Dominica. And it's through this connectivity that we're going to reach every corner of Dominica and every individual in Dominica. So it's absolutely necessary, PM. The way business is transacted is expected to be transformed in a digital economy. The minister explains the necessity of this transformation. The cost of transactions through the internet is vastly re reduced. Say, for example, you have someone say a Dominican living abroad who wants a birth certificate. I know of some people, relatives actually, who wait for Christmas time or carnival time for them to actually come down and physically go to the registry mm -hmm. to get it. It may be a birth certificate, theft certificate for someone, um, marriage certificate and so on. Um, we're going to see that change drastically. You're going to have someone be able to access online platforms and actually pay for a birth certificate and get it in a matter of hours. Mm. That is the type of revolution that we mm. want to see. Mm. We want to see the co transactional cost being reduced significantly. We want to see a farmer, for example, who's still in the soil, planting vegetables, taking a five minute break or even less and paying a bill without having to take a bus or take his pickup and, and go to pay a utility and stand in line for minutes and hours. For example, in this COVID period, we saw how long the lines were. We're going to see the way of lives of people being transformed. We're going to see travel facilitation, for example, of tourism. We're going to see, um, you, you're going to find that businesses are able to, to access greater markets uh, and we're not only restricted by the numbers in Dominica, but we're going to see that we can access the six billion people around the world. Mm -hmm. So there's so many attendant benefits to transform into a digital economy and um, we're excited about it here in Dominica. I know you are too mm -hmm. and um, I, I just look forward to the day that, that we can see ourselves leave, leading the way in um, our transformation process. Achieving digital transformation of the economy will cost money. Government has secured a 75 million EC dollar loan from the World Bank to fund its implementation. There's a regional component of this okay. project that um, you know the minister is quite familiar with. It's heavily based on cyber security and telecommunications. He may speak to that. Um, and we are not drawing down on our 28 million component for that. That's this um, revising and reviewing legislation and so on for cyber security, for sharing information and so on. Um, there's a component for health, there's a component for education, for travel facilitation, for tourism. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are attendant benefits for, for businesses, for young entrepreneurs, for education, mm -hmm. for support to the private sector, for e-government, for digitization and digitalization. Mm -hmm. um, so there are tremendous benefits across the board to see that transformation of the way that we conduct business. There's also a major component where we're going to move towards attaining jobs and, and skilling and retooling young professionals in particular to ensure that they're up to par, they're up to speed in terms of accessing jobs and the opportunities out there. Meantime, Prime Minister Skerritt says the idea is to get Dominicans to transition from traditional methods of transacting business to doing so online. We are left with no other option, and we'll be left with no other option as a country. Um, we have an opportunity to lead the way um, in respect to the um, digitalized, digitalization of our economy and ensuring that technology and the use of technology is, is more prevalent in our, in our community. Obviously, I think what has happened in the past we have gone ahead with these changes, but, but left the people behind. 
and, 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 and what we're seeking to do differently now is to ensure that we have the people um, along the process, along the process, and, and get our citizens and residents to, to have a, 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 a greater appreciation um, for the use of technology. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. Prime Minister Skerritt has given two young ministers, Oscar George and Kasani Lavilla, mandate to engage the youth in leading the country into the digital age, pushing the use of technology. The ministers are responsible for telecommunications and the digital economy, respectively. To complement these efforts, the Prime Minister is contemplating a significant shift in the focus of the country's education system. I'm really giving you guys a free hand um, in, in advancing this. Uh, I, I believe in it. I am convinced that um, it is important. This is why in our manifesto we, we, we made very strong reference to this. Um, I, I, I accept that there are, there are so many benefits to it. Um, you know, for young people coming from universities, um, coming to look for the traditional jobs, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you know uh, I, I don't think we can continue going to university and coming back and waiting for the government to give us a job. Um, I, I think we have to start, we have to, we have to keep creating opportunities for ourselves. And, and many young people, you, you reference mm -hmm. Ms. Samuel and others, you know, who are creating opportunities for themselves um, using these platforms. And, and I think, and this is why I've said that the, the education system, I'm hoping to tell the minister sometime next month, uh, we have to uh, review the education system. Um, really have a paradigm shift Mm -hmm. uh, to it, um, you know, and, and to ensure that it is it is it is addressing current day challenges um, and it is preparing students to deal with current day challenges. And Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence says this year's emancipation celebrations have a greater significance as the world goes through a period of racial reckoning. Andrea Louis tells us more. Emancipation celebrations are held each year to recognize the end of slavery and the dawn of a new era for black people. The public killing of African-American citizen George Floyd in the United States in May saw that country and others erupt into various forms of protest to end systemic racism and advocate for the better treatment of minority races. Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence says people of all races need to be respected and recognized for their contribution to society. All races have to be, I think, recognized and appreciated for who they are. Um, when you look at it, we're all really all human race. All of us are created equal in the eyes of God. And as such, all of us should be loved and respected regardless of color <coughs> or race. Um, and slavery was an unfortunate situation, event in the history of black people, but it 
did happen, it happened. Um, so what we could also focus on would be what are some of the positive things that came out out of the evil system of slavery. In the case of the United States, Lawrence points out that black Americans have made significant contributions to all spheres of society. When you think of people like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, these are black people and the basketballers, you know, the Michael Jordans and all of that. If we're speaking about the states, all these are black and even Obama recently being first black president of the United these are achieve these are wonderful achievements of black people um, in a in a country that maybe still has racial tensions um, which is the United States. So I think it's important that we continue to recognize the contribution which black people have made in the history of our countries and to um, really show appreciation for the contributions that they have made as we all strive towards working in harmony together with everybody. The chief cultural officer believes that going forward, people need to be encouraged to respect each other in order to overcome their differences. There must not be reverse discrimination where we hate the haters, <laughs> um, you see? So we must be careful about that. The point is that we have to encourage people to, to, to love one another and all of, all of us, all races, respect each other, show love for one another and simply just try to work together to make this whole world a better place. And Antigua's Prime Minister Gaston Brown finally had his long-anticipated meeting with other major shareholder governments of Liat on Monday. Brown has been trying for some time now to have the ears of his counterparts in hopes of persuading them to save Liat. There have been reports that a previous meeting requested by Brown did not materialize. Prime Minister Gonzales has brushed aside comments that he and another Prime Minister were bent on seeing the back of Liat. Gonzales says he came to office in 2001 when Caribbean Star and Caribbean Sun were engaging in predatory pricing, creating challenges for Liat. He says his administration stepped up to the plate when others did not. Liat was under real pressure. A lot of governments across the region and opposition parties had embraced Stanford and, and were giving in to his blandishments. You know, you know how sometimes we are in this region. You know, a big Texan come on and you fall over and he says he has a few dollars and he put two planes in disguise and uh, all of a sudden your own is of no importance. Mm -hmm. Liat issued in 2001 the rights issue to raise $40 million. The only government which bought shares was the government of St. Vincent Grand, is my government, $2.9 million. Pay that money either in December 2001 or early January, thereabouts, 2002. No private sector entity put any money in, despite all the yap, 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 yap that they want to put money and they want to do this. He says he led the resistance to Stanford at the time. Look, for nearly 20 years, I have soldiered doing this work for Liat. Ralph want to undermine Liat. I, 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 got, I, I, I come face to face with the arithmetic. If somebody else had come by and said they could finance, put in the money. But when Mia said, look, I don't have any more money to put. And I'm leaving Mia to say how much money she put over the last couple of years. She put a, a phenomenal amount of money. And before that, Owen Arthur and Frondel Stewart and David Thompson, all very strongly supportive of Liat. It is true that Barbados had benefits. But the country is under an IMF program, a tough IMF program. And there are further difficulties now with COVID. And it's difficult for them, it's difficult for Antigua. Tourism economy is ours, it's very difficult for us and for Dominica. But it is a crippling thing for Antigua and real horrors for Barbados, the, the, the circumstances of COVID, horrors in an economic sense.
Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. away $30,000 in cash, oh, yeah. two bags of money plus a grand every Friday. Or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. A new in home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. St. Martin Primary student Aniela Birmingham tops the Grade 6 National Assessment. Telecoms Minister Oscar George says Dominica is better prepared for post-disaster communication. And Prime Minister Skerritt contemplates a significant shift in the focus of the country's education system. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.